For a Christian, it's always an incredibly beautiful moment when you observe the life of another person who is yet to come to know Jesus, and you see as they're confronted with the gospel message and the lights of understanding begin to come on. They realize that we're all sinners who deserve to be eternally separated from a holy God. But then they hear of Jesus Christ, God the Son, who loves us so much that He came to us to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried. He rose again from the grave. And that through faith in Him, we can have everlasting life. It's a beautiful thing to see someone realize that through simple faith in that which Jesus has done, we can be born again spiritually into the family of God. And whether all of the terms are understood at that moment or not, the concept that they're coming to understand in that moment of salvation is the concept found in the term grace, the grace of God, God's unmerited favor. You see, we can't become a Christian until we realize that we can't do enough to earn our way into that relationship. We simply have to trust God and place our faith in Him, believing in what Jesus has done. But it's amazing how quickly Christians who, who are saved by faith can drift back into a works mentality that feel as though we have to do certain things or, or not do certain things to maintain God's love. And that's a sad way to seek to live the Christian life. It robs us of joy. It robs us of security. It's, it's not the way God would have us to live. It's a sad thing when people feel as though we've got to do certain things to maintain God's love. But you know, there's another twist on that that's equally as disruptive. It's the mindset that thinks if we do certain works, we can earn God's favor in an even greater way. In other words, if we do certain things that we can find a way to obligate God, to manipulate God into giving us what we want in the course of our lives. That too is a destructive way to approach the Christian life. The mindset that if we just do enough or believe enough, or sometimes we're told if we give enough, that we can put God in a position where he has to give us what we want. Some people have a view of God that's not too different than the view of someone who finds the proverbial bottle with the genie inside. That if we treat God just right, that he'll come out and he'll give us whatever our heart desires. But I want you to know that we've got a God that's greater than that. He, he's not a God who's going to give us whatever our heart desires. He's a God who's so powerful, He can give us the desires that are in our heart. You see, that's the way God works. You see, it, it is true. God loves us, and He wants what's best for us. But becoming a believer doesn't mean that we're all of a sudden exempt from hardship and trial and adversity and all of these things. But we have a God who, in the midst of it all, can do such a work in our heart that He can lead us forward in faith. And I love the way David addressed this in Psalm 37 and verse 4. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now again, some have taken this at face value and they would say, look, it says right there in the Bible, if you delight yourself in the Lord, which means to find your pleasure in him, that in response, God will give you the desires of your heart. But what God ultimately is saying is, I'm not going to give you everything your heart desires. I'm going to put those desires on the inside of your heart. What we find is the longer we walk with God in faith and living according to his grace, our desires in life will begin to align with his will for our lives. We'll, we'll sense a dissatisfaction with those things that aren't the best and we'll seek God's perfect will in the course of our lives. Now, we're all very much a work in progress, but as we live by faith and trust in the grace of God, yielding to Him in our lives, we're gonna to begin to desire things that at one point in our life we would have thought was totally unreasonable. We'll begin to desire things like time in the Word, time in prayer. We'll begin to genuinely, sincerely long for fellowshipping with the family of God. We'll even come to the place where the opportunity to give, to support God's work and worship Him in that way is something that we desire to do. You see, all of those are a testimony to the fact not that we're working to gain God's love or keep His love, or that we're working to gain God's favor so that He'll give us things in our lives, but it'll represent the fact that we understand how good He is and how much He's done and our response will be based in love, and it will all be because of the grace of God. 
You see, I want you to know all of that is the result of a life that's been placed in the hands of God. We say, Lord, I am trusting you for it all. You've been so good to me. I could never earn your love or keep your love or gain your favor, but you freely extend your grace to me. And so I would tell you this today, don't do what you do to earn God's love or God's favor, but do what you do today because you are loved by God and you are favored by God. You see, it's God's grace that can equip us and enable us and lead us to engage with that life that he has for us today. So let's join in the chorus of that great Christian hymn, Amazing Grace, and make the decision today to do what we do out of a heart that's motivated by gratitude for a God who's done so much for us. <laughs> 